Hi, I'm Sanna and welcome to my perfume channel. Today, let's get fruity. We have multiple different fragrances with a specific fruit note for each scent. I hope you will enjoy and although fruity fragrances are not my favorite genre per se, but I enjoy them, especially in summertime. I have been collecting fragrances for the last five years, so I will also mention uh, the ones I have had in my collection and those I have sampled on my skin. So let's get started. Let's start with the peach and I chose Kirke by Tiziana Terenzi. And Kirke is this fruity, creamy, exotic fragrance. The peach here is creamy, a bit effervescent, aquatic, fresh elements as well. It's like a tropical vacation in a bottle, loved by all genders around the world. There's even a rumor that Real Madrid players smell like Kirke. I wish I could comment on that. So Kirke by Tiziana Terenzi, a peachy tropical experience. The next fruit is mango, and in my opinion, the most luxurious niche-smelling mango can be found in Ordo Serei by Naomi Gutzir. This is such a luxurious blend. The scent pyramid of Ordo Serei is huge, but what I smell the most is the mango, the ripe mango with dried fruits, honey, tobacco leaf, rum, and there's also a touch of coconut. And this coconut here wraps this all up, making Orde Serei a beautiful summer vacation fragrance that will last you for a long, long time. Fragrances by Naomi Gutzer are so long lasting on skin, on clothing, and radiate a unique scent around you. So Orde Serei by Naomi Gutzer. It's your luxurious mango scent. The next fruit is banana. And my choice would be Banana Banana by L'Artisan Parfumé. And also, I picked up Jasmine of Athens by Theodore Scalatinis as well. So first things first, look at the sprayer. The sprayer goals. This is a banana-centered fragrance that doesn't smell juvenile or cheap. In this scent, they have captured the essence of banana, of the whole banana plant, the leaves, the stem, the banana flower, a lot of powderiness in it. This creates a powdery, fruity veil around you. Banana banana has a wonderful dry down as well that feels ambery and vanillic. And also, what is important to note here, that L'Artisan Parfumer makes aristocratic smelling scents, and this is no exception. It smells opulent and regal. Banana Banana by L'Artisan Parfumer. Another option, a cheaper option, is Jasmine of Athens, Eau de Parfum by Theodore Scaltinis, and it's an indie brand. And this bottle, I think, it's around 45 euros only. And if you're looking at the notes, you will not see any bananas there. But I trust my nose and I can tell you that this smells like tiara flowers, ylang ylang, plumeria, and banana pulp. And when I smell the jasmine of Athens, it makes me think of the color yellow. So this scent smells yellow to me. My brain somehow associates scents with the colors. So I don't know, I'm weird like that. Beautiful summer vacation fragrance um, can be worn day to day in summertime. It will uplift your mood, it sparks joy, quite long lasting with a nice scent trail. So, Jasmine of Athens by Theodore Skeltings. It's so hot, I hope you don't melt. I could also add here Montal Intense Tiare. Tiare, Monoi, Plumeria somehow has this banana aspect. I don't know if you agree or disagree. So I could mention uh, Intense Tiare by Montal as well. And it's very strong, oily, a bit sunscreeny scent. I have it in my collection, but I forgot to bring it with me to my dinner table. <laughs> the next fruit is plum. And I personally love plum in my sense. It's probably 
my number one. And I have three different offerings for you, so you have a choice, you know? It's always great to have a choice. Anike 5 is my first one by Eight and Bob. Mm. I really reach for this fragrance in autumn, winter season because it's a boozy plum with cinnamon and rum. It's very delicious smelling. It almost leans gourmand. I can see this being worn all year round, but to me it has a bit Christmassy, festive vibe. So Anike 5 by Aiden Bob. The next big four plummy fragrance is Mora by Latafa. And it's a Middle Eastern fragrance where the plum is smoky. It's smoky, it's boozy, it's dark, but not too dense. What grounds the scent is an earthy patchouli. I really love this one. It's so affordable. It's only like 20, 25 euros for 100 ml. A sultry evening scent with a prominent plum. This is a great option. So Mora by Latafa. And the third option where the plum plays the leading role is Tom Ford, the Black Orchid Parfum. It's very European city chic. I cannot count how many times I already have been asked what I'm wearing. Unusual, it's mysterious. The plum here feels fizzy. Dark truffles with orchid, that imaginary flower. Creamy, exotic, ylang ylang, with an earthy patchouli. So, black orchid, parfum by Tom Ford. Apricot. Okay, let's start with the oldest one. And it's the Tura Noir by Serge Lutin. And this is an opulent, regal, aristocratic smelling scent with prominent tuberose and apricots. This fruit has been sitting in the sun. It's almost has a honey nuance. The tuberose is not feisty here. It's balmy. If you love marzipan, like I do, you could really enjoy this one. Marzipani, a bit powdery. We have to remind myself to wear it often. It has a mind of its own. Christopher Sheldrake definitely has put some mystery in the Tour Noir. Next one is a Middle Eastern offering and it's uh, Crystal Love by Atar Collection. As if you're having um, a bit melted ice cream with apricots on top. There's nutmeg, saffron. And it's a beautiful Burman scent. I specifically smell apricot in here although it's not mentioned in the scent pyramid, but it's there. Dreamy one, indulgent. So Crystal Love by Atar Collection. And the third one, Ebhar Kasamat by Rasasi. There are citruses in the opening and an apple note. However, as it starts to develop on my skin, I get apricots. Creamy, a bit lactonic apricots, together with cinnamon, nutmeg, saffron. I also smell a baked apple nuance, as I said in my previous Middle Eastern video. These two have something in common, I feel. And together with apricots, it has this caramelized apple, and here the praline note is very prominent. So, Kasmat Ebhar by Rasasi. I wanted to add something unusual. And um, I chose rhubarb. Rhubarb as a prominent note. Most realistically smelling rhubarb can be found in a fragrance called Dream by Agatha. And that's a new brand to me. I recently tested it in my local perfume store. That rhubarb projected strongly and was noticeable on my skin for five hours. The rhubarb in Dream by Agatha smells as if you are in a garden and you're peeling off the layers of rhubarb. There is this grassy aspect and also uh, an earthy touch as if there's still some soil attached to that rhubarb. And the next fragrance that I have with the prominent rhubarb is Giardino Benessere Hashabs and it's made in Italy. It smells so pungent, so fresh, grassy. Hashabis is a combination of rhubarb, green notes, musk, and a prominent note of uh, marijuana. 
as if you're sitting in a garden smoking some Mary Jane and munching on rhubarbs. There's also petrichor accord. When it's on my skin, it gives off this after the rain feel. So Giardino Benessere Hashabis. This is not the best idea to wear it in office. You will probably get, get some weird looks. Something citrusy, something very aromatic. Dolce Amalfi by Zerzhov. And I have this in a travel size. I don't know where to begin. It has captured a lot of childhood memories of mine. My grandmother used to make a queen's jam and also Sidonia marmalade. Zerzhov has captured this fruit here perfectly. It's a bit sourish, very fragrant, aromatic, juicy, and it's combined with cardamom, cinnamon. It can be worn all year round. In winter time, it will amplify that Christmassy spice cabinet, gingerbread cookie feel. And in summertime, it will show you its juicy, sunny side. So Dolce Malfi by Zerzhov, vacation material, especially if you're going to Italy. What I'm going to be talking about is strawberry. Here I would like to mention multiple fragrances that I do not own. Uh, they need to be mentioned here for sure. If you're a fan of strawberries, of strawberry jam that feels sweet, dense, syrupy, then the best choice is Mokhalat by Montal. It makes my mouth water because <laughs> I had that fragrance and remember it clearly how it smelled. It's this dense strawberry jam with leather and musk aspects. The juice was pinkish, reddish color. So you need to be careful when spraying it on when you're wearing something white. Barbie doll skin, a bit plasticky, together with strawberries. Outrageous in a way. It's avant-garde, not for everybody, definitely. But if you want something fruity, edgy, with a prominent strawberry accord, then try Mukhlat. Another fragrance with strawberry note was Burberry Her. And Burberry Her, I, I decluttered it. And I will tell you why. It's not a bad scent, so no shade. I don't know how, why, but it triggered my anxiety. It somehow smelled as if you brought strawberries to a hospital as if Baccarat Rouge took a swim in the salty ocean waters and then came out on the shore and lathered on wild strawberry lotion. Salty, medicinal strawberries. It's cool, it's cool, but not for me. Other fragrances that I could mention here are by Umbert Loka 777, Venom Incar Incarne, Incarna. I had a small sample of it and to my nose it smells a bit rubbery, strawberry jam, more natural smelling than, let's say, mokhlat. There's leather and that leather feels sweet and with that fruity strawberry touch. Ginger and benzoins as well, it felt dense. It was interesting, sparked curiosity when I was wearing it, but it's not for me. The next note is pineapple. A juicy, realistic pineapple note can be found in these fragrances. And um, this one is Cartier Le bon Terre in Eau de Toilette concentration. And also in a vintage hidden gem, Cherer II by Jean-Louis Cherer. Cartier Le bon Terre is a shipper type of fragrance. It's the lily of the valley with green aspects, with raindrops. And this pineapple comes out to play, especially strong in summertime. Sophisticated, sparkly in a way because it's filled with aldehydes. Great office scent for business meetings. And as mentioned, Scherer II by Jean-Louis Scherer. A great Gatsby kind of a fragrance. It's big, bold, a bit arrogant. It's my ballet and opera fragrance. It feels opulent, aristocratic. It may smell dated for some, but if you are a fragrance enthusiast like myself, 
you should definitely buy yourself at least a small bottle like this. It's so cheap, it's like 20 euros, very art deco. So, Scherer too by Jean-Louis Scherer. And the third fragrance I wanted to add when talking about pineapples is La Marca Jal, made by Mark Buxton, the rebel in the perfume industry. Lamar is categorized as amber floral, but the lead player is the pineapple here. There's cardamom, rose, uh, cashmere wood, vanilla, and when I was testing it out, I actually tested it out uh, last week, it had a pungent accord in it. Maybe it's from cranberries. Another interesting thing that I noticed about Lamar Cajal, in the dry down, it had something from Instant Crush and also Baccarat Rouge 540. And if you don't like Baccarat Rouge 540, mm, maybe it's not for you. But if you're a fan of Instant Crush and uh, Sensual Instinct as well, the dry down will feel a bit familiar to you. So this was it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave me a comment of what's your favorite fruit. I would love to know. And see you on my next video. Bye.